Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of One Pot, where I want to talk a bit about Dark Souls, a series which really needs no introduction. Why do I want to talk about it? I'm sure everyone and their dog has talked about Dark Souls. Because I'm going to be honest, I think Dark Souls is not as hard as everyone says it is. And I have a few reasons for that, but I need to back up. I don't want to say that Dark Souls isn't a hard game because it is hard. People act like it's the hardest game that's ever existed, and that is not true. Not at all. Um, it can have its moments of being an absolute dick to the player. You know, with hidden traps and monsters around corners. But I feel like it's trying to emulate something more real and tangible than what other games have been trying to do. But Dark Souls starts with all sorts of things, but if you're here for a deep and engaging story, I don't think Dark Souls, the games, are for you. I don't know a lot about the lore, but there, there's bits and pieces of it scattered all throughout the world of the games. And the three games seem to take place in three separate kingdoms where characters will appear and kind of cross between them and makes me extra confused because I see them and I'm like I saw you in one but here you are in three what so maybe one and three are kind of linked but I'm not sure so Let's start with the basics. Dark Souls is a third person action adventure game with a very deliberate combat system. You can swing light, heavy, left hand or right hand depending. You can make your character left or right handed depending on which side of the controller you favor to use for your primary attacks. I don't think there's a single weapon that performs better in the right hand, but I guess they just feel like a lot of characters are right-handed, so that's how they set them up. But you can just switch the weapons around and it doesn't really affect much. Now, Dark Souls has lots of ways to play it, and I have never really explored all of them. There's magic, there's faith, which is clerical abilities, and in the second game they added hexes, which is kind of a combination of both, but there's also pyromancy, which is still a spell, but seems to rely less on spell. It's so odd to me. It's really odd, and I just... It just confuses me a bit. So, it's fine. But how do I feel about Dark Souls? Hmm. How do I express this? Dark Souls is a game where I'm playing an adventure where I get to choose the majority of how it works. Sure, the characters will tell me maybe I should check out this place. I can go almost anywhere, explore around, and see what's here, see what's there. And do all sorts of things. There's so many choices that you just start to wander and do whatever you want. And it's interesting how that freedom is not stifled. 
sampling. You just kind of wander off in a direction you think is the right direction. You know, you can talk to the NPCs and they'll tell you what you maybe should be doing. But for the most part, it seems so interesting. I think there is some kind of order to the game. But there's a few times where I get lost somewhere or something wouldn't be going exactly the way I wanted to and then I'd look it up and be like, oh, this area is optional. I'll be like, what? I uh, ended up in a wharf in the second game and the area was completely optional apparently. I didn't need to be there to win to, to beat the game. But it led to a place that was, I would argue, very important. But the game doesn't require you to go that way to win. I honestly love how obtuse the game is with some things, but I also hate it. Uh, the second game really improved the obtuseness. The first, like, there's a huge improvement in the second game. And I just... I have to give them credit. The quality of life improvements in the second game are fantastic. Uh, for instance, uh, in the first game, you had a set amount of Estus charges. That's your way of healing. If you've never played Dark Souls, for some reason, I want to give my opinions on Dark Souls. Uh, you had like set extras, which is five, and then you could give up a humanity after you were given to add more charges and you rested at that bonfire in the first game. And well, that's okay by me. You could also level up your Estus with, uh, Maidens. So it was like an item, but you could also use the item. But I thought the item just upgraded your Estus because it's kind of what it implied it did. But that's not what it did at all. So I wasted a bunch of them in the first game when I could have had much more powerful healing abilities, which made the game probably harder in some ways, but not really because I played it very beefy and ended up leaning towards heavy armor in the first game. Because I found magic in that to be not as useful, but I still had some. Because I started the game deprived, so I think I had 10 of each stat, so it wasn't too much to get a spell or two. And some of those spells were very helpful, like the light spell and magic weapon. I mostly use white though. I only had the one attunement slot in the first game. Second game, I decided to go straight cleric. Well, not straight cleric, but cleric was my deal. You know, gotta go with the faith, keeping the faith, playing this healer type, arch type character. And I have. I was having, I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's different. It's interesting. And that's the thing. There's so many different ways you can play the game. I guess you can play a caster type character and wear heavy armor, but you have to uh, spread your stats out. So maybe you can't use a super heavy weapon because of it, or you can only wield, uh, use a two-handed weapon, not use a shield. You know, there's a shield and light armor. You can basically have it all if you're willing to not be great at everything else. I honestly think if you're going to get into Dark Souls, the first game is probably 
the best place to start. But the second game could also be just as good, the Scholar of the First Sin edition. The second game is a wee bit easier because you get the warp ability. That's the thing though, like, everyone will just will like a different game better, so you know if you're really interested in getting into Dark Souls or a Souls like game. Yeah, Dark Souls is on sale. Give it a give it a go. But what's so fascinating with the game is is that the difficulty is basically all up to the player. Because the difficulty never changes, right? It's always the same. You, can, but you can. Stack the odds in your favor. Bit. Um, you can summon an NPC to come help you. You can summon another player. Or you can do what I was doing in the second game. And when I realized that there actually is an incentive and reward for helping other players, I was like, oh, I can scope out the boss free. Like, no, no cost. I break my thing, they summon me. I actually get my humanity back, so I don't need to, to be hollowed. And if we win, I get souls. If I lose, I just summon someone else. But I also get information on how to fight the boss. I kind of love that. Because it is fascinating how some of these bosses are like some bosses are super easy and some are incredibly obtuse but the, the problem with some of the bosses is i just want to have a the first game in particular had this problem but i just want to like you know i died and i'm like I'm mad i'm, I'm upset Kind of, I'm like, all right, what did I learn? You know, calm down. You're like, all right, this is what I got to do. And there was one boss in particular. I'm not going to say which boss it was, but I'll just say he's in uh, a cave in the first game. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And it was a long way from the bonfire to him. I even looked up a map to see if there was a closer bonfire because... I really didn't want to do that long walk. And there's another reason for that, but I'm not going to get into it for spoilery reasons. What? You know, I just wanted another go. And for the most part, the games kind of are okay about it, but I would be much better if I could just start, you know, Retry right from the nightmare fog. Let's go get my body back. Or whatever it's called in Dark Souls or Elden Ring. I'm hoping that Elden Ring is a little more lenient on that, I guess. Maybe lenient's not the right word. But. It's going to be interesting because there's a lot of things that Dark Souls likes to do, like keep an item just, just out of reach, or you got a platform to get it with awkward controls, which is a total from software thing, but how does that translate to a game like Elden Ring, where your character can jump without needing to get a running start first? Jumping in Dark Souls is weird, and I'm not a huge fan of platforming in the game. But I can pull it off most of the time. I'm just super interested, and maybe hyped. Hype is a word I can use. I'm super hyped for Elden Ring. And these drops through Dark Souls have been 
maybe eye opening. I don't know if I want to give Sekiro another try because Sekiro was one of my least favorite from software game. I know it got, I gave it, um, it's 2019 it came out. I did give it, um, uh, I put it ranked 10 on my best games of the year list there, but I hadn't played Jedi Fall in Order, which I think is a better game. I, sorry, but I like Jedi Fall in Order better than Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I'm just really bad at Sekiro because it's all parries all the time, and I could muster my way through Jedi Fall in Order, but I could not muster my way through Sekiro. I might go back and try it again, but I really hated the the parries in it. I couldn't time it well. But that's fine. I was like the more I've seen of Elden Ring, I was kind of like, oh great, another Soulsy game. And then the more I kind of looked at it and saw what they were doing with Elden Ring. I cared less about the, the George R. R. Martin uh, world that he wrote. I cared more about the fact that the game was gameplay of the game looked much more interesting than other Souls games. Okay. How do you take Dark Souls, which is you know, the areas are very linear most of the time. You can go from like one point to another point. Maybe there's like a little branching path, but usually it either goes to a dead end or goes back and you go through an area. How do you take that and make it into a more open world game? I'm not saying that it's going to be great, but I'm intrigued. And I'm also happy to see that there are different items again, like different weapons and them. Oh, spells. Their spells are so interesting. But yeah, they've got the boring ones like the one that but Oh I just love it. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to love getting more into Elden Ring when it comes out later this month. But it's getting late now, and I do hope to be streaming again on Tuesday. I apologize for missing it, but I was so sick. I got like a after vaccine, like a second dose, like a second hit of the of the vaccine. I don't know what it was, but the. But my booster gave me this awful like sickness and then two weeks, basically two weeks to the day. Monday night, I was so sick, feeling like I had the chills and I was like, oh, no, did I did I catch did I get covid? And it it, it wasn't, thankfully, uh, it was just a after I, I did consult uh, a doctor via phone and they told me it was it's sometimes happens with people they get a reaction it happens a little later if you keep having them though we're gonna want to do a blood test totally okay with that but it was a little scary but uh, i didn't wake up to like 4 10 on tuesday and i usually go stream at 2 2 30 uh, it was not a good time for me, so I'm um, sorry for anyone who was looking forward to that. Anyone who watches these religiously, I do hope that anyone who's going to play Elden Ring later, maybe we can hook up, try and help you out, try and help me out. But that's not for later, so if you're playing Dark Souls 2 or 3 right now, and you see a 
a Zen show up with a merchant's headset and a mace and a shield. It might be me. But until next time. Bye today.